My friend heard God's voice. If she hadn't obeyed, she would have walked right into danger. Stay tuned to hear what happened. Welcome to The Prayer Investigator. I'm Linda Evans Shepherd. My guest, Gaylin Williams, is an inspirational speaker and author of over 41 books. She runs the ministry Relationship Resources that help better connect people to others and God. Welcome to the show, Gaylin. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited too because you have said that you have the greatest prayer that you've ever prayed, and it's a prayer that you pray consistently. Would you share that prayer with us? Yes, it's a prayer that I pray almost every day. It's, Lord, I want to hear you more. I want to see you more, and I want to know you more deeply. I want to know you more intimately. Wow. Now, is that a biblical, a scriptural prayer to pray? The Bible talks about seeing and hearing him and, yes, knowing his heart. So I believe it is. You say that you have a very important prayer. Can you tell us what that is? Yes. Almost every day, I ask the Lord to let me see him and hear him and know his heart in greater ways. That is really a beautiful prayer. Can you tell us a story about that? Yes, there's actually many stories, but one of them was when I was in Jerusalem and I lived there part time. So every day when I'm walking, I ask the Lord for directions, turn right or left or go straight. And this one day I was planning on going through the old city like I normally do. And this day he said, no, go right. So I went right and I'd gone around a couple of different corners when I saw this wall of thousands of Muslim women all coming towards me. And I was the only Gentile out there. I was the only tourist that was out there. And I'm, Lord, what do I do? Do I keep going or do I turn around? I just thought I was supposed to turn around. And he said, no, keep going. I'm going, oh, are you sure? I want to make sure sometimes. Sometimes it can be my own thinking. And so I wanted to make sure that it was him that was telling me. And he says, yes, keep on going. So I kept going. And when I got past all these women, then near the Damascus Gate and all around the Damascus Gate were hundreds of Arab men with lots of police there. And so I started asking the police, what's going on? And no one would answer me or could answer me. They probably didn't because I was asking in English. And finally, I came to one policeman who he didn't answer me with words, but he just said, Ugh. and he took his hand and somebody was stabbed. And so I knew one was stabbed and I'm going, okay, Lord, what do I do now? And he said, keep going. And I still had lots more of these Arab men, Muslim men to go through. And again, I'm the only tourist out there. And so I just kept going. And later I found out that place where I was planning on going, where I normally walked each day, two tourists had been stabbed and killed right at the time when I was planning to go through there and in the location where I would have been. Wow. So you really did hear the voice of the Lord. How are you able to recognize his voice? It's just taken time and listening. Sometimes I think I don't hear his voice because I will ask him something, but then I go on and start talking and I don't take the time to just listen. So for me, it's normally just a still small voice within me. And if I am not sure that it's actually him, I will question. I'll ask him, Lord, show me, make this clear if this is really you. Oh, that's a great prayer. I sometimes ask, is this the Lord whose son died on the cross for my sins? Because it does say to test the spirit and we can hear other voices. What do you say to that? Oh, absolutely. And I don't want to be guided by any other voices. I want to only be guided by the Lord. 
one thing that I find is that the voice of the Holy Spirit that guides us will never have us go against the Word of God. Do you think that is a good fail say? Absolutely. He will never tell us to do something that the Word says not to do or vice versa. The Holy Spirit will never say, short of cash? No worry, you could just go rob the local liquor store. Do you think that's true? <laughs> he will never go against his character and his word. How can someone who really wants to be guided by the voice of the Lord and maybe not by, let's say, a spirit guide who masquerades as the voice of the Lord, how can that person learn to entertain the voice of God? I believe just practicing, just listening on things that seem small. So like it seems small to ask for directions. And yet for me, at least two times in Israel, my life could have been spared because I did. So it's just starting small. It doesn't have to be the great big things, but starting small and just asking God, what is it that you want? What direction do you want? And for me, I find it's easier, at least starting off, ask simple questions, ask yes or no questions, or ask, yes, very simple questions. The word does say in John that my sheep hear and know my voice. And I think that comes from listening. And I think it also comes from reading the word of God, because I can't tell you how many times when I'm reading God's word, he speaks to me that way. There's another verse in Isaiah 30, 21, that your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. And that word for hear in Hebrew is not just hear with your ears, but hear and obey. So I think it's important not just to hear it. We have to obey what he says. No, that's a great point because you could actually hear God's voice and go, nah, I don't think I want to do it that way. Oh, yes. And in that situation I told you about, it was easy to think, oh, I'm turning around. I'm going the other way. And you say that this has happened to you another time where the Lord led you out of danger because you heard his voice? Yes. I was driving. I wanted to go to the northernmost part in Israel. I was going all the way around Israel. And so I turned, I got to the Syria border, close to the Syria border, and turned north to go up to Mount Hermon. And I had a friend with me. And almost immediately when I turned to go north, I heard really clearly, turn around. and. It might, it could have been an audible voice. I don't know, but it was so strong. I didn't even tell my friend what I was doing. I just turned around. And the next day I found out that the next town where we would have been going through, they had six hours of gunfight and nine people were killed there during that time when we would have been driving through. Wow. It's amazing that you were practiced enough to listen to the voice of the Lord, that when he spoke to you, you heard him, you knew it was him, and you didn't hesitate. And that may have saved your life. Yes. And what you've said, it is important to be practiced. Practice hearing God's voice, because I don't think it comes naturally for most of us. No, we hear our voice very clearly. <laughs> and we hear humans' voices. Mm. True. And also the voice of the enemy. What do you say to that? Oh, the enemy loves to talk to us. He loves to try to get us to go someplace where God would not take this or do something that God would not have us do. Even sometimes it can be something good that he's yes. wanted to do, but it's not what God wants. He can masquerade as the voice of light, the angel of light, and he can trick us. I know that there are people here who do not want to be tricked, who do not want to confuse their voice with the voice of the Lord or the voice of peer pressure with the voice of the Lord. Could you lead them in a prayer to hear God's voice clearly? Oh, Lord, I just want to pray for every single person who will listen to this, who will see this, that you would just help them 
to be able to see and hear you more clearly and that they would know your voice, that they would learn to know when it's you and when it's the evil one or just their own thoughts. So Lord, would you just draw people to yourself in greater and greater ways to know you and to know what you have to say to them and be able to recognize your voice. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I agree with that. And I just say in prayer, Lord, help us to still our souls before you. Help us to be quiet, to read your word, and to follow the voice in your word that speaks to us, to hear you, and to remember to ask, to remember to ask you for direction so that we can follow you out of danger and into your will and into your purposes. And we pray that in the power of the name of Jesus. Okay, Lynn, do you have one more thing that you would like to share with the audience? I just want to encourage you to take the time to listen to God's voice, to take the time to learn to hear his voice. And I know for me, as I've been doing that, then God really started opening his heart to me so that I could understand him and his word. And that's where my newest book, Explore God's Heart for Israel, came out of. That's amazing. So how do people get in touch with you and get a copy of your book? They can go to godsheart.info without an apostrophe and learn more about it. And then there's links on there to be able to get the book. That is good to know. And Gay Lynn, we are so glad that you were here with us today. Thank you. It was a privilege to be with you today. I hope that you enjoyed our show today about hearing God's voice. And if you did, would you comment, share, subscribe? And we have a gift for you. It is a beautiful blessing that you can play, pray, and print. Just go to myprayergift.com and remember. God loves you, and he wants you to talk to him. See you next time.